Next, in the Macintosh Collector series of videos, we feature the Quadra 800. The Quadra 800 was released on February 10, 1993, discontinued March 14, 1994 upon the introduction of the Power Macintosh line of computers. It had a 68040 processor running at 33 MHz and had 8 MB of RAM which was soldered to the board. It was the flagship of a fleet of new computers that Apple released in February 1993, which also included the Color Classic, the first Color PowerBook, the 165C, as well as the first Centrus computers and the LC3. The computer was advertised paired with an Apple Extended Keyboard 2, the new Apple Design Mouse, and the 16-inch color display. So how did the Quadra 800 come into being? For that, we have to look back at the first generation of Quadra computer, the 700 and 900, released in October 1991. With an 040 processor running at 25 megahertz, these simply blew away the existing Macintosh 2 line. Shortly after, the 33 megahertz chip became available, giving rise to the Quadra 950, but those chips were not yet in large enough quantity to upgrade the 700, so thoughts of a Quadra 750 would have to wait. In the interim came the rise of multimedia computers. 1993 would be the year of the multimedia computer, and they were everywhere. Multimedia. 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 Oh my god, but what's a multimedia computer anyway? It was basically marketing hype for a computer with a CD-ROM drive on it. And in the PC world, it also meant that the computer had a sound card and cheap plastic stereo speakers. Kind of pathetic that sound was still an add-on for PCs in the mid-90s. People wanted a CD-ROM in their Mac. So how do you put the Apple CD300 into a Quadra 700? The answer was, you can't. So a new tower design was needed. Apple's first attempt at integrated CD-ROM was with the hastily assembled Macintosh 2VX in 1992. It was also the first to use a combination metal and plastic case, which looked kind of cheap, even more so when the plastic yellowed. And here we have it, the new Quadra 800 upon its introduction on the Computer Chronicles. So it's based around a new mini tower design, and we've uh, continued on our use of plastic as well as metal to enclose mm -hmm. this. And Damn! Okay, the power button is in the rear, and the button can also be turned and locked on, which was useful if you had it as a server, so if the power was interrupted, it could just start itself back up. Power on was available from the keyboard as well. The internal CD drive for the Quadra 800 was optional, but if you bought that configuration, you got your software on CD as well. At the time, Apple used a Caddy-style double-speed CD-ROM drive. So with the Caddy, squeeze the corners and open it up. It's simple and slick. CD Caddies quickly went out of style, but I think they would have saved a lot of discs from damage. And we just slip it in like so. Okay, so that should not have happened. To the service manual. Okay, step one, exchange disk. That didn't work. Step two, replace CD-ROM drive. Ah. Step three. <laughs> There's no step three. There's no step three. <laughs> That's right, Goldblum. The uh, service manual tends to rush the nuclear option sometimes. But don't worry, because I scavenged a caddy drive from an old LC520. Wait a minute. I took that picture eight years ago. Damned internet. Anyway, here's the drive I took. Just get rid of the LC's quick connectors. Okay, I swapped it out. Let's try again. Stay in there. Ah, success. I put in Mist because it was the title that really got CD-ROM off the ground. 
People bought CD-ROM drives so they could play Myst. 20 years ago, I was blown away by this opening video. CD-ROM was ideal for education as well. Tons of educational titles. Yay! And Bungie's first big game, Marathon, they very much patterned Halo off this 1994 game. Now look at this. Let's see if this makes sense. I activate four aliens. I dispense with them, go down to the room, it's a dead end, I check out the corners, uh, and I, you know, look at the floor, and then, now where did he come from? Oh well, collect the ammo. Yay! Then there were reference volumes on CD-ROM like Microsoft's Cinemania which even allowed you to watch a handful of movie clips. No! Microsoft released tons of these CD-ROM reference titles, only to have them wiped out by the internet a few years later. And CD-ROM was also a godsend for people who had to install the 40-disc floppy version of Microsoft Office. What the hell? The base configuration was 4,679 US dollars. And that was without the CD-ROM, monitor, or keyboard. The Quad 800's design was brand new, but it left a legacy of being very hard to work with if you wanted to add anything to the motherboard like new bus cards or RAM. Even labeled a road apple by the website Low End Mac for this reason. But in the Computer Chronicles episode, we have Apple's Quadrate 800 product manager, and he's going to show us how it's done. Is it easy to drop that board out, or is that complicated? Uh, actually, all you would do is pull this. Uh -huh. not, it's not I see. There. Okay. There's a screw in here. So. Okay. Damn! Okay, let's muddle through it. We loosen the four captive screws in the back. Pull the cover forward, then up. first thing you have to do, that even the service manual doesn't mention, is to remove the reset interrupt buttons. Then remove the screw. Now slide the motherboard over so the notch is lined up with this post. Then lift the latch to release the board. Now the hard part, you have to reach in this tight space and disconnect all the cords. The Mac 2 lines were famous for being very easy to access and this was a major step backward. Even so, Apple maintained this design until 1997. Okay, so the board is off, and look at those yellow solid state capacitors. Not the round ones that leaked oil all over the board in earlier Macs. And you can see the 68040 processor under the heatsink. This made the Quadrate 800 the fastest computer of its day. The Quadrate 800 was the first to use interleaved memory, meaning if RAM was installed in identical pairs, you would gain memory access speed. This is what helped it outperform the Quadra 950 with the same processor. It also standardized on 72-pin RAM used by the PC industry. For video RAM, the 800 could have 512K or 1 megabyte. 
yet the earlier Quadro 700 and 900 could have up to 2 megabytes on the motherboard. Lastly, if we look at the panel under the power supply, we can see the signatures of the designers, a callback to the original Macintosh. There were three drive slots for removable media, aimed at CD-ROM, floppy, and tape. Each drive had a mounting sled for easy removal from the computer chassis. The CD-ROM soon became a tray loader, the 300i Plus, and the floppy went to the new manual insert style with a drive door. Yeah, Dust was definitely concerned with the old floppy drives. So, including the blank, there were six different bezels that you could install on this thing. The PowerPC transition was already on the roadmap when the Quadra 800 was released. After the PowerPC was released in 1994, you could buy a Power Macintosh upgrade card with a PowerPC 601 chip running at 66 MHz. Plug it into the PDS slot and go. Uh, obviously blocking one of your three new bus slots. Or you could just replace the whole motherboard and have a Power Mac 8100. The Quadra 800 remains an interesting piece in Mac history, the first in a line of Mac mini towers and a very cool teardown if you get the chance, but only if you can get past the motherboard. In 2013, Apple discontinued its tower line, and that's unfortunate. Keep an eye on this channel and we'll explore another iconic desktop in the next video.